a lot of people would look at you and, and, and they'll be thinking, you do stuff that scares me. You do stuff that would kind of incite fear within me, whether it be climbing K2 or Everest twice or going into war zones or being a special forces soldier. Is that something that you've ever felt fear? And if so, how do you kind of work with that? Like when we use a word fear, it gives it a, a negative feel. Um, and it, like if you break it down, like fear is just a reaction in your body. Um, yeah, like I've felt fear before in, in, in the past. And yeah, like fear generally only happens for like a short period of time because there's usually a logical expon explanation that that you can put to why you're feeling that fear, whether it's a round that's just cracked over your head or something that's just exploded, or you know maybe there's some rock fall on a mountain, like that's a moment to be scared, right? But there's a logical explanation for it, and there's usually an action that you can take which is gonna get you out of that fear feeling, get you to some sort of safety. So you've gotta break it down that way. I think kind of the things that, that, that scare me more than, than those dangerous kind of things are just, you know, like living a stagnant life or living a boring life. Um, like boredom and mediocrity fit, like scare me way more than, than climbing Everest or being shot at. And I think like, I'd hate to just get to the age of like 80 or 90 years old or 100 and just turn back and just think that I've wasted time. You could say like, what's the most, what's the most, What's the thing that you fear the most? People might say it might be heights or whatever. Your sounds like it's sitting on the sofa and watching the TV and waiting for life to pass by. But I do believe there's a lot of people who do work a nine to five and they want to break it. They don't know how to break it. And fear is probably an element of that in terms of the stepping outside of the comfort zone and not having that level of security. It sounds like you haven't struggled to kind of step out of your comfort zone. For, but for people living a nine to five, what did you need to do to get out of it? Um. Do you know, like, just start small and you've got to, like, be honest with yourself, right? It's your choice, like, it's your life, like, no one else is going to change it. So you've got to make that decision. And then it's, you know, if you're not happy with your life and you want to change it, then then do it, right? And, and, and I don't know what that is, what, what anyone else is feeling, but, you know, if you start small and... Whether it's, you know, you, you want to get in shape, like start walking, start trying to create habits that are, that are healthy for, you, for your body and for your mind. You know, start walking, join a gym, join classes, put yourself in these situations. And this is where you grow, right? Because you're putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. And my uncomfortable situation is completely different to someone else's uncomfortable situation. And, you know, you could say that a million times over. Um, and career is like a big one, right? Like, that's the that's the that's the comfiest thing that people have is a career and money coming in, because that's you know without money, like the chances of being homeless and not being able to pay for food for your kids and your family, like that's that's the biggest fear, right? Um, and I can't tell anyone to to change that. You know, you've just got to ask yourself whether that's something that you want to change. You spoke about something there, which I know you spoke about before, but with struggle comes growth. And I know that you do a lot of working out and you're into your fitness. And you, I think something that a lot of people can do is they can start to struggle in the gym, on the road, running, in the swimming pool. But how important is it to get yourself into that struggle to then expand from it? Yeah, like I think, you know, going back to what we were saying before, it's like the world's an easy place to live in. I don't think the human body's set up to not feel struggle. Um, you know, we've struggled all our life, right? And if you think the reason why we're all sat in these buildings and eating good food is because we struggled in the past and that struggle has generated systems and put things in place and now we've built supermarkets and cars, but that all came from struggle. So good things come from struggle, but th it's hard to find it these days. So like, you know, it goes back to what what I was saying before, it's like struggle could just be going for a run or struggle could be reading a book or, you know, just doing something difficult. Like when I was that shy kid, like struggle for me was just having a conversation with someone. But like the more I do it, the better I become. And it's about, you know, if you can look back when in, in 10 years and just go like, 
fuck, I never used to, be able to have a conversation with someone. Now I can walk into a room and speak to everyone openly and confidently. Like that's what you get from struggle, right? It does, it does grow a lot. <clears throat> I noticed you said that with hard times, hard times build hard men, mm -hmm. that build soft times, that build soft people. And I suppose that related to me in terms of children, if you have them, or people that you help out. Maybe you might have been through a hard time, but then you make it more comfortable for people. You said stuff like building supermarkets, doctors, pharmacies and stuff, so people can have it easier. And then they get away from the hard times and the struggle and the growth. And I think doing exercise or pushing yourself in a way where the world is set up for us to live easily and have a nice life where everything's kind of accommodated for us, there's still different ways we can push ourselves and struggle. But then it comes from kind of us taking ourselves to the struggle rather than just being born into the struggle as yeah, much. Yeah, like, like I'm not saying by any means, you know, burn down the supermarkets and let's go back to shooting deers and picking apples from trees, right? But like, that's the world that we've lived, that we live in now. Um, I think fitness and exercise is the easiest and best way to just find some sort of struggle. And it's manageable, right? It's manageable, it's easy. You join a gym, you go out for a run and you've got something to work for. If you start running, you can work up to a 5K, a 10K a marathon. It's measurable. You've got goals that you can tick off. If you're going into a gym, you can start lifting heavy. And you've got, you've got a measurement, right, that you can go off, that you can see yourself getting better at something. Sport's the same. Like, like I surf, like I can feel myself every time I go surfing, getting better and better and better. And that's a good feeling. And then you'll notice in other areas of your life that, you know, changes will happen and whether it's, you know, confidence or whether it's in the workplace or whether it's in a relationship or whether it's just your general happiness. Like the more of these things that you do when you're developing yourself and getting better and better, everything changes.